Hi, everyone. Um, running a bit light, actually running good 90 minutes late. It's been a long day, and um, I nearly didn't do it, but then I thought, look, I'll do it because um, it actually makes me more happy to do these. Um, get in front of the camera, great excuse to try some interesting whiskey, but also um, to... Um, to sort of just relax, right? That's what whiskey does. It helps you relax, um, depending on how you do it. So I'm gonna completely change the rules tonight. I will drink four interesting whiskeys, all of them the Glenlivet. Um, for those of you who follow mine or ATM's journey, we were blessed with the uh, presence of Alan Winchester, the master distiller of uh, the Glenlivet, the current master distiller. And he was in the country at the start of the month. It seems so long ago with everything else been going. And 8 p.m. was allowed to host um, Alan for a private masterclass or whiskey tasting with Alan, go through the range and listen to some of his stories. And one thing some of us who were lucky enough to be there noticed during the whole night is how much water Alan was putting into whiskey um and we kept kind of coasting on him and um it was kind of interesting you know here's a man who's been around whiskey for 40 45 years um and um has drunk a lot of whiskey traveled the world knows quite a lot about whiskey and he was putting a lot of water into the whiskey so i thought for tonight i'll drink four whiskeys share some yarns talk rubbish as i always do but I will keep putting a lot of water into my whiskey just to see what happens and share those um, thoughts with you. Cool. Let's see if all the links are working. Can someone comment, like, or just give us a little, if you can um, see the live and the audio is working absolutely fine. I never know what's happening. I should probably have like, a <laughs> or even just my wife to just like give me a little knock on the door. Yes, we can hear you. Um, she surely can because um, I'll wake up the whole house talking about these interesting whiskies. So this one probably, I mean, with the Glenfiddich 12, the Glenlivet 12 is probably one of the most well-liked, enjoyed, um, bought single malt in the world, um, Atomic. And um, I mean, it's very widely available. It's literally in every bar. And... Um, for the right reasons, you know, so smooth, so easy to drink. There's nothing in the Glenlivet 12 that would annoy you. So, like I said, with a bit of water. So I thought what I'll do is um, I'll go maybe two-thirds whiskey in a third water just to um, see what it feels like, right? Let's see. So I've probably poured myself, I don't know, that's not quite 30 mil. That's probably... Oh, is that 30 mil? Okay, let's 30 mil. Let's see. Let's try and put about 10, 15 mils of water in. All right. And again, for those of you who've been following my journey, you know how <laughs> I feel about normally putting water into the whiskey. Let's see. I mean, one thing you can notice at home as well, um, just before I get a spill, as soon as you put the water into the whiskey, you can sort of see the oils and the whiskey starting to part, open up. You see sort of like a chemical reaction. There's layers starting to fall apart. And that's why the term cutting it with water is quite prominent. Um, but look, everyone sort of enjoys it very, very differently, right? We all have our individual um, preferences. One thing I have to say though, as soon as I've added the water, it's been coming at me the, on the nose, the honey. Um, even from up here, it's just, it's opened up. So maybe Alan, well, he's only been talking about whiskey and making and well, and all that kind of stuff for 45 years. He does have a point. Very nice. I mean, those, um, typical space art Fuji characters are coming. There's a little bit of nutty character coming as well. Wow. I mean, the glass is just an absolute fruit bowl. Very nice. Let's see what it does on the palate. Mm. Mm. 
Were not. Man, uh, the Glenlivet's bottled at 40% to begin with. So for someone like me, it doesn't phase me to drink whiskey at 40%. I'll try some anyway. I still enjoy the flavors, but mm, quite nice. And obviously, <laughs> it's gonna, I'll say it anyway. For the right reasons, it feels and tastes quite watery. Because when it's 40%, I've added probably 15 to 20 mils of water. And um, it's there. The, the sweetness is there. It's absolutely fine. It definitely helps it make a lot more uh, sessionable, you could say. Um, but it's, it's absolutely fine. Really nice. Quite enjoying it, actually. Probably should do it more often. Mm. Very nice. I mean, there was a period of time the 12-year-old had disappeared from New Zealand um, and replaced by, I don't have it here, the blue bottle, the Founders Reserve, which I find just a little bit harsher, not as smooth as the 12. And I think, let's assume it's a younger whiskey. But I do believe the Founders Reserve was launched under Alan's guidance, you could say, and it's been an outstanding uh Single malt release, you know, sold quite well. But um, I was quite relieved to see the 12-year-old come back into the market. It's been a bit of a staple. Cool. Whiskey number two. Um, not very well known. It's kind of just been launched uh, with not a lot of fanfare, you know. I mean, it's sort of just slipped into the range. Um it has no age statement um, because you've got the Founders Reserve, then you've got the Glen Levitt 12, 15, 18, and I guess the 25. So this is kind of slipped in around the 15 or just about 12. So in between the 12 year old and the 15 year old, in terms of price, the retail's for 90 bucks. The Glen Levitt 12 is around 70 bucks. Yeah. And what's interesting here is um, they've called it the Captain's Reserve. There's a bit of a story in the box. If you click on the link, you'll see all of that blurb. But um, they've used selectively some cognac casks. So the standard American and French oak that they've used in the past, that's fine. Some of the whiskey has been aged in cognac casks, which adds a character of its own. Right. Cool. And continue to add the water. Right. Maybe Alan, well, he'd be waking up. It'd be breakfast time in the UK. And I'm sure he's locked in as well because of the COVID-19 outbreak. But um, look at that. The camera is not going to pick it up. I don't think it's going to be as defined. I'll try and do a video with my new Samsung phone one day because it's got real high definition. What I mean by cutting with water and those layers parting, um, Hopefully, with some good lighting, we can pick that up. But it's just beautiful. Mm. Doesn't seem as fruity on the nose as the 12. Mm. Lots more nutty character than the other one. Not as much honey. But still quite smooth and pleasant and inviting on the nose. Um, sort of keeping up with the typical Glenlivet character. Mm. Again, quite nice. Probably just a tiny hint of spice or oak. Still quite nice, very nice. Again, having added the water takes the edge off. And, it, and I'm assuming bulk of connoisseurs do add water to the whiskey. I guess it's a must, you must do it, right? For the longevity of the enjoyment and um, 
but also to make it sessionable because you know if you're watching tv or whatever um everyone does their whiskey differently uh, before meal during meal or after i tend to do them after meal um i got home quite late had my dinner and i'm now literally drinking my whiskey for tonight in front of you so everyone does it very very differently um which is absolutely fine let's see who's watching on the 8 p.m page here we go nope pat hope you are fine mate um pat we should do a video together like i did one with anthony last night you can talk about the food and the cognac and the cocktails and your multi-million dollar watch collection <laughs> hey bro how are you bro uh and saran and ryan sweet who's on linkedin hi brian hope you're good buddy hi vane and andrew who loves his glen liver and um unfortunately because of the lockdown i can't access that sherry whiskey you brought for me andrew but it will still be there uh left it in a safe place upright um hopefully i can go back to that single cast sherry cast glen liver you brought for me coming back to that one the captain's reserve i still don't quite understand it um what it's trying to achieve you know obviously the glen liver sells predominantly on this eight status stuff and then the youngest one being the founders reserve but i guess it sort of slips in with a little bit more of the nutty character but also gives people a little bit of a um, room you know i mean cognac age whiskey is not very common they do one in the shoes regal range as well um which also says selectively cognac cask age but it's quite nice very drinkable for 90 bucks If you're drinking <laughs> like this with water, it reminds me of drinking um, well, whiskey with my dad and um, his friends and his cousins because um, that's how they would be drinking it, but with uh, even more water because they want to sort of session it for the two, three, four hours rather than drinking beer, just drink the whiskey with lots and lots of water. All right. What should I do next? Let's do... I'll do the sherry cask a little so and I'll do the peated last. All right. So this is part of the Nadura series, which I think in Gaelic means natural. Yep, there it is. And this is a three bottle series. The first one was American Oak, which I'm not going to do in this video because I did the 12 of the Captain, which is the smoother whiskey. So I thought I'll do the sherry spicy and then the peated last. So the other one that I'm not going to talk about in the video is the American Oak, which is their batch release cast trim. So this kid just comes straight out of the cask, no water added, but aged exclusively in ex bourbon casks. So you've got loads and loads of honey, vanilla, uh, baked apple, creaminess coming through. And then, then there's this one, which is the... Oloroso sherry cast. So the whiskey has been exclusively aged in ex sherry cast. Again, bottled at cast strength, no added water, no color. So all of that color has come in from the, um, the sherry cask. And this batch is bottled at 60.3%. So quite high. And this one and the next one, the other Nadura peated is the ones I was quite interesting to see what happens if I add that same amount of water. Obviously I've drunk them neat plenty of times. So let's see what the water does. Wow. I mean, it is a cast trend. So, um, even after adding the water, I probably just brought it down to be just over 40%. Um, and it's still coming of the nose that um, the pepperiness, the cinnamon, it's quite dominant. The sweetness of the sherry cask is there uh, and in quite a dominant way. I like the ones before, which were at 40%. <sighs> Beautiful.
Mm. Quite nice. Wow. I mean, I've always said um, the Nadura series um, from Glen Levitt is one of the most value for money single malt Scotch whiskies you can buy. Have all three in the house and you don't really need anything else. You know, you've got the bourbon cast. If you feel like light and sweet, you've got the sherry, you've got the spicy and the dry fruit. And then you've got the peaty. If you feel like gentle peat, which I'll elaborate a bit more on, but you've got all three side by side um, in terms of kept capturing all the flavors really um, that you could be requiring in uh, one evening, but also they retail for around hundred New Zealand dollars. But being at car strength, you are almost getting a bottle and a half. So it makes it a $70, $75 bottle. I mean, you can do your mats on it, which makes it phenomenal value and leaves you in control by adding the water and bringing it down to about 40% like I have. Mm. Feels really warm on the palate. Wow, quite nice actually. Still packed a punch. Because you know, we put a 60% a whiskey down to around 40, which is still quite a lot. And there's a bit of heat in there. There's a little bit of sweetness in the back of the palate. Quite nice, but the overall spiciness of the whiskey is still quite high. Very nice actually, really enjoying it. But adding the water has probably taken that extreme pepperiness or the cinnamon away. It's kind of subdued a little. It's letting more of the sweetness of the sherry come through. Very nice. Hmm. Wow. Do I enjoy it with water more? I think so. I enjoy that. That was quite nice. Mm. All right. Should we do that one? The Peter. Bottle and release in small batches with no chill filtration. So, I mean, I didn't ask Alan, but I wonder what they mean by small batches. I mean, it is the Glen Levitt, the biggest or the second biggest, depending on who you talk to. Single malt brand in the world. It plays for one or two with uh, Glenfiddich. But um, this is their whiskey finish and heavily peated whiskey cask. So the spirit wasn't peated to begin with. But the whiskey is finished in cask that previously held a uh, very peaty, smoky whiskey. So does that make sense? The barley used for this particular whiskey, I hope I'm right. I probably should have done my research properly. But the barley used for this one was unpeated, but the whiskey was transferred to heavily peated uh, smoky casks. So it's added. Oh, uh, there we go. We've gone and ruined it. I had water in there, didn't I? All right, I have to get rid of that. Wow. That's quite good. <laughs> That's quite good. Like that. All right. Look at that. There we go. Really pale. Really, really pale. And hardly any color. Actually, I'm going to bring to show you what color comes from different casks. I'm going to bring this one back. So that's the sherry cask, and then you've got the peated. So if you look at them side by side, and if I was to add the number three, the bourbon one, um, the American oak, that might be just a little bit more pale than that one, but not much more. So if no artificial color has been added, that's how the sherry cask imparts the color, or the port cask will give a little bit, but that's how it is and it'll remain that for a very very long time you can age the whiskey for a very long time and it will stay that way 
Right, let's add a little bit of water in there. See what happens. Cool. So this one was bottled at 61.8% ABV, which is very high. All right, let's do a quick round and see who is watching. Hi, Manny. Hope you're good, buddy, and keeping safe um, in Melbourne. Mm. Tomek, you are way too young to retire, buddy. Hi, Phil. Hope you're good, buddy. Are you working, Phil? Oh, probably that's a question for a private chat. I wonder if you're working, um, if you still have to go into work. Wow, beautiful. I mean, it's not overly peated. Um, it's not a Lafroy. It's very far away from it. Um, it's very lightly peated. It seems that way, especially with the added water. But, but it's there. It's prominent. Um, you'll notice it. Um, it's not as smoky and um quite tolerable i guess but if i didn't add the water it will attack the palates because dare i say we're not supposed to be drinking any liquid with 62 percent alcohol or nearly 62 this one is 61.8 um, we're not supposed to be drinking um that high alcohol it's not advisable for your own health all right let's try it see what happens Mm. Very tamed. Maybe I stuffed it up. Too much water in there. Completely drowned the whiskey. <laughs> I mean, there's a little bit of pepperiness there. The smoke, very gentle. Very, very gentle smoke. But yeah, I've absolutely butchered that whiskey with way too much water. Way too much. Um... Yeah, I ruined that. That's all right. That was quite nice. Still there. It's actually, I mean, there is a little bit of joy in there. Is that good? Still lingering. Still lingering. A little bit of smoke just on the back of the palate. Mm. Quite nice. That's all right. I mean, would I do it as a regular occurrence just for me, speaking strictly about me? Probably not. But there was joy, 100%, in adding the amount of water I kind of saw Alan putting into his whiskey. Um, That's quite nice. Look, at the start, I said I'll talk about four whiskeys, but I just can't help myself. I think I've had a very long day, very, very long day, and um, I'm going to treat myself with a little bit of this. Why not? So that's a single cask, the Glenlivet, called Tom Alvone, bottled on the 17th of August, 2015. I... 19 years so you can do the math backwards it's a very old whiskey it's a single cask um it's available in new zealand at the moment how much 54.1 percent abv and i would slow the process down take a guess what cast type this is looking at the color what do you think the cut cast type might have been oh, sorry the reflection from the laptop Quite rich in color. It is a single cask. So this has been aged in a single Oloroso sherry cask. And um, we must have done something right to get some into New Zealand. Um, well, I mean, 
I really enjoy that whiskey because when they come from the distillery, they fill it to here and I've brought it over an extended period of time, shared with many friends down to here. And now I'm scared because we have one more left in 8 p.m. stock. Um, and I don't want to open it. So I'm going to allow myself a tiny dram. And I'm sorry if you're watching it, Alan. I'm not adding water into that one. I think that has to be enjoyed on its own. I mean, um, my glass, I've been sort of using the same glass. So there's probably a little bit of residual water in there anyway. Hmm. Kenny, your favorite whiskey? Look at that color. I mean, that's just... A lot of people do not put emphasis on the color of the whiskey, but I do because I can tell which whiskeys have artificial color or have natural color. And this is 100% natural color. And that's just, that's hypnotic. Beautiful. And I love the Denver Lally glass because it exemplifies the color so beautifully. Look at that. I mean, I could do what 26 is. 26 30 minute video just with that little drum you know what i mean it's coming on the nose so beautiful <laughs> 19 years in the oloroso sherry cast wow all right let's see what everyone's up to i'm actually thank you so much i apologize again for being so late but there was just nothing i could do I like to do these videos 8, 8.30. I have in the last four nights, but I got home at 8.30, quarter to nine. Quick shower and um, dinner, kiss and cuddle with the kids. Tell them a random story, <laughs> random bedtime story, which all start with once upon a time, there was a little village called Hamilton because I live in a little village called Hamilton. But let's see who's online and who's commenting if there's any questions. Looks like the LinkedIn crowd is behaving and they've gone to bed. Have you guys? Is anyone watching? What? Morgan, what's your favorite whiskey for less than $100 a bottle? Uh, my favorite whiskey for less than $100 a bottle, Johnny Walker, Green Label, all day long. There you go. I said it. Because... um. My favorite whiskey in the Johnny Walker range is the Green Label. I think it's fantastic. It's an all malt whiskey. So all of the whiskey that's gone in there is 100% made from malted barley. It comes from the great single malt distilleries uh, that joined at the hip within the Diageo portfolio that make up the Johnny Walker blend. And um, I reckon Johnny Walker Green is just fantastic. And that one also disappeared from New Zealand shelves for a period of time, but luckily they've come back and they're only 90 bucks and it's just beautiful whiskey. Love it. Happily drink it anytime. Um, it's, it just hits the mark. A little bit of smoke, a little bit of spice, just the right amount of sweetness. All right. Let's see what the guys on Facebook are up to. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, the founder or part founder of this particular glass is watching the video. Mr. Denver, what are you up to? How are you, mate? Back in Australia after Monster, agree with the Green Label from the sales. But it's back now, Green Label, right? I mean, I remember my journey with smoky whiskey started, well, many years ago when I was being forced into being by my dad and my um, uncles. But there was a night when I drank. Johnny Walker Green Label, drank a Talisker 10 year old and a Lyle Woolen 16 in that order. And that was the first time I kind of understood how the flavor profile raises with different whiskeys. You know, I tried on the green, which has a little bit of smoke. Then you had the Talisker 10, which has a little bit more. And the Lager Woolen, in hindsight at the time, felt the most powerful, the most smoky whiskey. It sort of steps up a little bit that way. So, right. Mr. Andrew is watching. Andrew, your Talisker is on your way. Hopefully, you will have it tomorrow morning. 
And um, I would love to do this video with you, uh, with you drinking the Talisca and seeing what you think of it, buddy. Oh, still nosing this. I haven't sipped it. Why would you? Beautiful sweetness of the sherry, the spice. There's loads of oaky sort of... Um, oh, it's just... It's just a work of art. Um, keeps going. Just keeps giving you lots of joy. I can't see who's commenting because um, it says just Facebook user. I, I don't know who you are. I'm very sorry. But um, you've made a number of comments. What's your first one? I don't know what platform you're watching this video on. The 16 year old one kicks ass. Which whiskey are you referring to, sir or ma'am? 18 for me, as you know. Is that Chris? Are you talking about Glen 18, Chris? Hello, man. You always feast the eyes first, but yeah, I agree. I want to bring something up. I'll show you something. Dare I say, the Captain's Reserve. Don't quote me on it, but that looks like artificial color. And Scotch whiskey industry allows it, you know. I'm sure most of you knew about it. But, and I mean, you saw my reaction to it. I like it. It's fine. More than happy to drink it, but doesn't wow me. But this is just, wow, in no hurry to drink it. What's Denver up to? Mate, you know what my favorite Ben Riak is. You know, <laughs> I still haven't actually. Um, the book's gone out now that I told you and um, Lily about, but um, my first ever book is out and it's named my whiskey of the year for 2019. And 12 other whiskeys that I truly enjoyed. Um, you can get the whiskey, um, the whiskey book on Amazon, but oh, they were in Riyadh. I could do a five hour video about it, but don't distract me. Tonight's about Glen Levitt. Beautiful. Very nice. And the perfect glass for it. Mm. Mm. It's loads of spice. Very nice. Quite oily tree. Oh, thank God. No water. Never add water to such <laughs> precious whiskey. I mean, that right there sums it up. The single malt that started it all. And I can put links up to Alan's um, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. He's quite active on all social media. And kudos to him for coming down to New Zealand and talking about his whiskeys, sharing some of the passion, but also it goes well beyond. I mean, you know, a lot of these whiskeys, especially the Glen Liver, it started well beyond some of these systems came in. I mean, yeah, it would have been an interesting place to be in Scotland in the early days, being an illicit um, whiskey distiller, dare I say. But that's how the Glen Liver started. Look into the history of it. It's just beautiful, very beautiful how it all started, um, how they survived, how they became legal, got the ground, all that kind of stuff. The struggles the brand went through to protect the name, the Glen Liver, because there are many copycats, um, which is true for many industries, right? You know, someone finds a bit of success and people want to copy them. But yeah. It's right there, Kenny. The 16 year old bourbon cast. Do you want me to talk about it? I'm more than happy to do it because the video is running a bit uh, quicker tonight. More than happy to talk about it, but let me savor this just for a while. Beautiful. Wow. Has everyone gone to sleep on LinkedIn? The good people. Someone's a bike. 
which book? Four hundred dollars, Andrew. If you're still watching, I can pay me later. It's about four hundred bucks. It's a nineteen-year-old single cask, um, not originally released for the New Zealand market. Um, but I can explain all that to you. No problem. Did you get bottle number one off the other one, Andrew? If you are still watching, I'd love to know. Because uh, we didn't catch up afterwards, buddy. Mm, so good. Beautiful whiskey. Wow. And that's what's fantastic about car strength whiskeys. And I've gone and ruined my own <laughs> agenda of trying very nice whiskeys with a bit of water like Alan did and got sucked back into old habits of drinking whiskeys neat at car strength because that's where the joy is. If you could slow the process down, nose it very slowly, slow the process down. It's not a marathon, um, sorry. <laughs> it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Who's watching? Hi, Crafty. Hope you are safe and well in Tasmania. Um, Crafty makes some fantastic whiskeys and um, craft gins in Tasmania. Look them up. Um, feel, <laughs> feel free to put a link up, Crafty, if you want to. We can't get his stuff here because of the red tape. It's just, we'd love to try his stuff one day. and Maybe go to Tasmania one day. Mm. It's not for sale because it's gone. They've stopped making that particular whiskey. Cool. Yeah, Brian. Um... I was threatened with divorce by my lovely wife. She was happy. Well, she's not happy. She's happy for me to keep the mo for now, but the beard had to go. Um, apparently, I was pushing my luck. Um, all right. Let's do this one. Put this back safely. And I mean, I want to say for those of you who've been watching my content for the last two, two and a half years, that shelf has always been st um, stuck with the Glenlivet. It's always been there. It's not because um, I've all of a sudden uh, become a Glenlivet fanboy. It's always been there and I've always enjoyed it. Because um, I find it a true easy drinking whiskey at so many levels. You know, they go up from the founders all the way to 18. If you ask me, uh, my favorite and the one I've shared the most and probably drank the most is the 15 year old um it was the first whiskey out of the blends i've tried as a single malt and thought wow that's very powerful um but dare i say it seems a bit watery now because I drank too much of the car strength stuff so the um, the 15 which i think it's 43 percent seems just a bit tamed which is okay it makes it sessionable but also makes it amazing for um sharing with friends one thing I want to share with you guys before I start talking about this particular whiskey is this will happen to your whiskey if you leave it for far too long like that because the whiskey will literally eat the cork away. Um, just a um, word of caution for those who keep their whiskey for a long time and not store them properly. So what this particular whiskey is, which Kami was referring to before, is a discontinued American Glenlivet Nadura, which I was lucky to pick up some bottles of um, in Hawaii. So this one discontinued. This is a batch release, 16-year-old, the Glenlivet, but um, bottled at 53.7. So cast trained 16-year-old in a bourbon cast. And see what it's like. I mean, I love the crap out of this whiskey. There's a date stamp on the back of this bottle. 
bottled on the 18th of March 2014. So just just over six years ago, it was bottled. It's not a single cask. Uh, it is a batch release, but again, we don't know how big the batches are. Wow. There's something magical about whiskey's age in an ex-bourbon cask for this long. Um, and again, I keep referring to Kenny because I know he's watching in between. There's just something magical. Takes on a beautiful, deep honey smell. It's just very nice. Mixed in with the oak, uh, very mature, um, very mature tropical fruits. You know, sort of ripe banana, maybe a bit of guava. It's beautiful. But hey, they've discontinued it. And they've chosen to do the young ish no age statement um nadura series the uh, ex american oak the sherry and the peated so if you can find a bottle of this savor it this is just fantastic mm. wow just loads of sweetness. Beautiful tropical fruit characters. There's that guava again. Wow. Honey, vanilla, bit of oak. Very nice. Just beautiful. I think I should, I should, you can probably see in the bottle. That's how much color a whiskey takes on after being an ex bourbon cast, so hardly any. I mean, it's prominent, but it's nowhere as deep as the sherry ones, even the young Nadura. Um, so the bourbon cast, hardly any color being imparted. Cool. Let's do a quick round of who's live. If there's any questions, let's see. Hi, Jay. We'll try. No, no, no. Jay. Guess what is sitting in my whiskey room right now? Handed over to me by a very dear friend, Mike McCarthy, who's just come back from Australia not so long ago. And he wanted me to review his new favorite Australian whiskey. I just can't find the time. Maybe I will with this lockdown. Who knows? There's a backlog of nearly 140 whiskeys now to review. But I'm having way more fun doing these than the reviews. I'll get into it. I'll do this here with the series Glenn Moranges. <sighs> Manny, I would love to do the Glen Moranges, man. But um, I said it the other night because Kate, um, a good lady friend of mine, asked the same question. I don't buy Glen Moranges with my own money. I like drinking them. But um, let's revisit the situation. Um, I'm guessing Glen Moranges is one of your favorite whiskeys. Is that so? Oh, what's happening on 8 p.m. page? What are you guys up to? Hi, Ryan. I packed your order just before with passion, with my own hands. I just remember one bottle. Was it um, Crack and Rum? Was that one of your bottles? <laughs> and there was the other two as well. And that's it. Cool. Well, I'm going to go off camera and linger this for a very long time. But um, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching what turned out to be an impromptu uh, live. I hope it added something to your day. I know we are going through quite a bit at the moment um, with the closures and the lockdown. There is a lot of uncertainty. So I hope these videos are um, enlightening your day in a weird way while I'm rambling on drinking some high-quality whiskey. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. I will answer them. You can get hold of me. Otherwise, um, I'll see you hopefully tomorrow night for another Whiskey Live. See you. Bye.